Day 25. This one was fun, part one, and not too hard for me. I had a lot of fun with it. I solved it and then I made some improvements to it. We're moving sea cucumbers. Some of them move to the right, some of them move down. There's a phase where we move all the ones to the right and then phase two we do the moving down and those two phases comprise the step and we do multiple steps and eventually we're supposed to see a spot cleared out where we can land our submarine. See how this space is kind of clearing out? After 58 steps it looks like this. Let me run my solution. Here's the starting contents of the grid. Look what I did with the color here. I'm quite pleased with this. This highlights the um, changes that are made from the horizontal movement in yellow. So the dot in the grader shows that this rightward moving sea cucumber moved right by one. And then down on the next line, this one moved right by one. And on the bottom line, this one moved right, but then it wrapped around to over here. So here's the dot where it was, and here's the highlighted sea cucumber symbol where it is now. And then the phase two, if you like, of each step is the vertical movement. So I code that, I color that in blue. So you can see um, this Sea cum so this downward moving sea cucumber went this way and is there an example of one that wrapped this one went straight down you see anything up at the top well let's look at some more step two okay so this this one is going to move up to here and here's where it was and here's where it is Okay, let's look at the code and maybe go through in the debugger a little bit. Uh, but the, the key thing is that when we get to the end here, um, step 51, 52, 53, 54, look what happens when we get to the end here. Step 57, phase 1, there's one move. There are no vertical movements. 58. Phase one, no horizontal movements, no vertical movements. So that means it's done. Okay, let's uh, see what we have here. We build the grid from the test data. We create a little um, list of tuples of string and numpy arrays that store the symbols and the direction that they, the direction of travel that they denote. So this greater than sign means you're moving down zero rows and to the right one column. And this symbol means you're going down one row and to the right zero columns. So here's, uh, so first we, we print the, uh, starting contents. Here's uh, the output from this. Starting contents and then we call print grid. I um, want to make sure we take a look at print grid. And then we'll go to a maximum of a thousand steps and we call the step function and it returns a new grid and the number of changes. So we can say uh, if there's no change then we'll break and we'll get out of the loop and then we're done. Okay, uh, let's look at print grid and then we'll come back and look at step and the rest. Print grid is in helpers and it takes a grid which is a two-dimensional numpy array and then a list of points where the elements are to be highlighted and this is the color that they're to be highlighted in. We go through and uh, for every row index and column index, we set the color depending on whether this, um, the value at this place is supposed to be highlighted. And then we print the color coding and then the value. And then at the end of every row, we, we do a new line 
and then at the end of all the rows we make sure the color is set back to white. That's print grid. That was called from here. Now let's look and see how step works. So here's step. This is where most everything happens. It takes a step number and the current generation grid and it returns a new grid and the number of changes in the step. We count the number of moves. Actually here, let's just put a breakpoint. We'll just go through this in the debugger. So no moves get zero. And now remember the symbols and directions. That's um, this. So we're going to first process the this symbol and direction and then this symbol and direction. And we're using enumerate so that we can also get a number, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, that tells us, um, actually, it's going to be 0 and 1, um, that tells us which one we're working on, the horizontal or the vertical. Uh, okay, so, first time through, no movements in the phase, no highlights yet. We're going to copy the current generation grid to make the new one. Skip over this for the moment. And now we're going to call move movable symbols. Here we go. We'll go into that now. Move movable symbols. Well, how many have we moved? Zero. What is the shape of this grid? Nine rows, ten columns. And then we go through and we look for the symbol. And if we find the symbol, then we call move if able for this row index, call index. Let's go. Move if able. All right. Well, first, we want to make a NumPy array out of um, the coordinates. And that's partly so we can use addition on these vectors. We want to take uh, where we are and add to it the direction. And the direction for horizontal movement is zero movements on um, no change to row and then move, move one column to the right. So here we go. New pause before wrap uh, is zero five. And um, the wrapping deals with if you move to the right and you're already on the right edge you would go over to the left edge. So um, this will be more interesting when we have one where we're actually doing wrapping. But the modulo operator works with NumPy arrays nicely. So if any of these, if either of the two numbers in here are greater than or equal to the dimension for that axis, then it wraps around. Okay, so new pause before wrapped, new pause wrapped are going to be the same because no wrapping was needed. And now we make a tuple out of that wrapped new position. And then we want to know if um, the target position is clear. And it wasn't in that case. So maybe we'll put a breakpoint in here so we can just look at one where... Um, where it is. Okay, good. So now we've we've found a move. We're going to do a move. And let's see if we can get the next gen grid showing in as an array here. Here it is. This might be a little bit tricky to work out. Target chords. We want to look at target chords. 0 6. So here's 0 6. So this is where we're moving. I think we're probably moving this one to here. So this is the target position. And we're about to clear out this. We're going to put a dot in here and then we're going to put a greater than in here. So here goes line 20. I put the dot in here and now we're going to move the, we're going to put a greater than here. And there it is. Okay, I'm going to put this away because it takes a lot of space. But you just saw how we did the move by placing a dot and then placing the symbol. And now we need to note that we have modified those two places. So we add those to highlights. Okay, have we been through it all? Step, move if able, 
Move movable symbols. Yes. Okay. I hope it goes as well for you. I hope to do more and see you again. If not in this playlist, then in something else. Bye for now.